against the NFL for racial bias in hiring, Brian Flores has been the subject of many discussions involving the NFL and its efforts to inspire change and stop racism. Last night, we showed you Brian and his attorneys providing insight into their motivation to throw the challenge flag, if you will, at the NFL commissioner and owners on racial diversity. His response to the NFL hiring former Attorney General Loretta Lynch to defend against the lawsuit, plus the personal risks that he is making in this case. Tonight, my conversation focuses on the coach talking more about this case and his message to America. Brian, I have to be very candid with you. I have a lot of uh, empathy with what you're going through and what you stated about how you're reaching out to your children who are under the age of 10 to explain to them the reality of racism uh, from a systemic basis and an institutional basis. And then you talked about something very key. It's across the board. It isn't just the NFL. There are a lot of black successful Americans in corporate positions that have climbed the corporate ladder. They've earned the right to be there. And yet they have this stigma that they still have to do better than their white counterparts. What's your message to them? I would say that they're not alone. Um, and I think when you have uh, a team of people around you, and this is uh, it's really you know, part of sports, you know, hope comes with uh, uh, a gathering of people who are moving in the same direction with the same uh, ideas and, and, and thought processes on a, on a specific team. And now um, I know there's you know, leaders across you know, a lot of different industries or, or blacks and minorities across a lot of different industries. Um, who feel this way. They're not alone. Um, and um, I'm speaking out for them as well. Um, that's, that's, that's something that's important to me. That's not lost on me at all. Um, and that, 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 you know, I'm speaking for them. We're speaking for them. Um, and um, they should have hope. Um, they just need to continue to work and continue to, to do the things that they've done to get to themselves to that position. Um, and we'll, we'll, We'll work, do as much as we can to, to, to make the necessary changes um, so that they can get the opportunities, the fair and equal opportunities uh, to lead in, in whatever industry that is. And for, for, so, I mean, for, for so many years, I mean, I think it's so important what Brian just said because, you know, the, the fact is that, you know, the Me Too movement, which obviously we all know about, um, really g gave women the, the power to know that they weren't alone and to come forward and to talk about their experiences of being survivors and, uh, and hold people accountable. And, you know, we've had Black Lives Matter, but we haven't had sort of a movement in sort of the holding people accountable um, when it comes to race. And Kelly, I've had conversations in the last couple of weeks with, um, you know, I had a conversation with uh, someone in upper management at Merrill Lynch um, who said, thank you. Thank you for speaking out on this. Um, it's not just football. It's it's not just sports. It's it's a, it's across all industries. It should be a no-brainer. And Roger Goodell himself has stated that we have to inspire change, and he has stated that they have a problem. But what's being done about the problem? Uh, will your case get them to solve the problem? Furthermore, what will it say, take for owners uh, of these NFL teams to get it right? and start doing the right thing beyond the Rooney rule? You know, to me, I think, I think if you ask the owners as a, as in general, any owner, hey, is there a problem with, with uh, minority hires? Uh, I think each one of them would say, yes, I, I, obviously, you know, look at the numbers. Um, and as a group, they would say, yes, there's an issue. Um, but individually, you know, that turns into, I don't have an issue. And I think that ultimately is the issue. Um, I think everyone's got a responsibility, um, you know, specific to the NFL, the, um, you know, the 31 owners have a, a responsibility to say, what am I going to do to make, make this change? Um, and we really need that across, uh, you know, all industries, you know, at, the, at, at those leadership positions. What am I personally going to do? I know that there's an issue. How am I going to be intentional about, uh, you know, creating a change? Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, uh, uh, lower the standards. No one is saying that. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but um, just make sure uh, 
you know that you know everyone that those leaders, uh, those owners, uh, those CEOs uh, are being intentional about um, diversity, inclusion, and uh, hiring you know qualified minorities. And, yeah. and to if, that point, if Commissioner Charles. Goodell wants to create change, I mean, I, I, just, I know I said it earlier, but mm -hmm. but I mean, if Commissioner Goodell wants to create change, I mean, we have a lot of real substantive things that we're going to obviously present to the NFL when when it's appropriate. But the the easy answer right now, as we speak, and you're interviewing us, is waive the arbitration clause and waive all the existing non-disclosure agreements and confidentiality agreements, because unless people can speak freely and people can see what's going on in a transparent way, change can never be made. For the young people and the older people who are watching this, black men, black women, white, brown, red, yellow, green, whatever, mm -hmm. for those who are watching this interview, what's your message to America and the world about ending racism and finally getting to the place of healing the soul of America. Uh, you know, I think diversity and, and inclusion is uh, important to becoming the best version of ourselves uh, as a team, as a company, as an organization. Um, I think the different perspectives that you can get, uh, the different backgrounds, the different um, uh, alliances that you can gain what can only uh, strengthen your team. Uh, that's been my experience in football and I, and, and I feel like that's, you know, there's, I've, I've talked to, you know, several CEOs and, 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 and um, I, I firmly believe that diversity, uh, inclusion is how you, you, you build the strongest possible team you, 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 you can. Um, I was lucky to, to grow up around uh, black people, white people, Jewish, Muslim, Asian, um, so uh, inclusion and diversity that, you know, my team, that's what it looks like. Um, and I feel like uh, I personally have a strong team, a strong inner circle. Um, you know, the teams that I've coached, I, I've certainly looked for that, looked for diversity, looked for the best and most qualified, regardless of skin color um, or, or ethnicity. And isn't that what America should be? That's, that's, that is the American dream.